We almost don't need to preach, honestly. The Holy Spirit has done so much already this morning that you know we could just enjoy the long weekend. But um, I've prepared, so I might as well share with you. And you're here, you haven't left yet, so I'll take that as you want to hear this. And but I just hope that you haven't come to hear from me or from from a man or from anyone or from a woman, whoever's preaching up here. I hope you I hope you've come to hear from the Holy Spirit because whoever preaches, whoever worships. They're just vessels to, and we, we just bring, we just try to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying and bring it to, uh, to us. So I've just got a word from Jimmy. Uh, Jimmy and Maria send their love to us all. They, they should be back. Are they back? This afternoon. So they're, they're, in, they're on the plane. So um, yeah, they send their love and uh, Jimmy just um, gave me some scriptures that I wanted to share with you guys from Matthew 10. It says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sicknesses, sickness and all kinds of disease. And uh, it goes on to continue in verse seven. It says, and as you go preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. And this is the working of the Holy Spirit. And uh, if, if anyone is in need of any of these things or anything else, maybe we could give some time later just for the Holy Spirit, just to continue the work that he's already started to do amongst us this morning. And, um, you know, the Holy Spirit is a very vast topic. I could be here for weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. But um, I know that we, you know, it's, it's Sunday and we, we've got a game on tonight. Hopefully, Para can get it done for all the Para supporters. Um, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but just some of the things that I felt uh, the Holy Spirit was highlighting that He wanted to share um, with us today. So, what is the Holy Spirit? Uh, we'll start there because that's always a good place to start. The Holy Spirit is 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 the person of God in spirit form. The best way I've heard it explained is that God is 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 obviously triune. He has God the Father. He has the Son, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. They're all forms of God, but it's like water, ice, and steam. They all, they all form, they're all from H2O, but different forms of that substance. So the Holy Spirit can be felt. We all have different manifestations of the Holy Spirit, how he touches each, each of us. There's not a certain way that we experience the touching of the Holy Spirit. He can be lied to. In the book of Acts, um, I think it's Ananias and Sapphira, they didn't lie to the, the apostles, they lied to the Holy Spirit. He can be grieved. We can grieve the Holy Spirit. He can be blasphemed as well. When it talks about the unforgivable sin, it's talking about blaspheming the Holy Spirit. What's that, what, what that means is that when you reject the saving grace of the Holy Spirit, then that's the unforgivable sin. There's no other way for you to be saved except through the Holy Spirit and the revelation of what Jesus did on the cross. He has his own language. So the Bible talks about the, the, the heavenly language that our mind is unfruitful when we pray, but we're, we have a direct, direct access to God. He's a witness. He can be resisted. He speaks to us. And this one I like. He can even transport people. Do you know that? He transported Philip from one location to another location. I haven't seen that in my day, but I think it would be pretty cool. It'd be cheaper than an Uber. And he prophesies. This is just a few things that he does. He does many more things. But like I said, I'd be here for weeks if I, uh, if I went through everything. Um, in, in the book of Acts, there was a guy, I think it's Acts, a guy called Agabus who prophesied concerning some things. And Adriana, my wife, she has very prophetic dreams. The Holy Spirit speaks to her very prophetically through dreams. She gives, he, he gives her things about people that she tells those people and they just freak out how accurate she is but it's not her it's just the Holy Spirit the way he uses her and he has character traits and attributes of who he is there's fruits of the Spirit which we're going to go into later on and you know the Holy Spirit has always existed Um, it says in the in the book of Genesis then God said let us make man in our own image it says in our own image so who's who's who, who when it says let us who's God referring to Jesus and the Holy Spirit and God, they're all there. Let us, it's, it's a plural there. 
and says, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. It says, so he created man in his own image. We're all created in the image of God. In his, in, in the image, in his image, in the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. Then God, then God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply. You know, the enemy will do everything that he can to distract people from knowing that they're made in the image of God. That's one of his main tactics. Because if we get a grasp that we're made in the image of God, then our life will never be the same. We'll have an accurate picture of who we actually are. But the devil and the enemy always tries to distort the image of a person. Because if he can get them far removed from what God has designed them to be, then he knows the battle is half won. So in the book of Genesis, we obviously know the story about the, the fall of man. God created Adam out of the dust of the earth. And Eve came from Adam and they sinned. We know that. And in Genesis uh, chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, it says, then, Adam, he, then to Adam he said, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying, you shall not eat of it, cursed is the ground for your sake. In toil you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Both thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat into the herb, you shall eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of your face you shall eat bread till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for dust you are, and to dust you shall return. And then in verse 24 it, go, 24 it goes on to say, So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the garden of Eden. And a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the, the way to the tree of life. Now the cherubim are those little chubby babies, those little angelic chubby babies. I don't think this probably is one of those chubby babies. I think this is probably a little bit different. He's guarding, he's, <laughs> he's got a flaming sword which turns every which way. But anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, but ever since that moment of the fall of man, the point I'm trying to make is that ever since that moment... Mankind has been grinding through life. We've been striving through this thing that we call life. We've been kind of searching to get our way back to where we once were, to what we were designed for, and that's fellowship with God. So we've got this kind of daily grind that we go through. You know, we wake up, we go to work, we come home, we go to sleep, we wake up, we go to work, we come home, we go to sleep. And it can just, sometimes life can just beat us down. And life can get the better of us sometimes. And we just, ever since that moment in the Garden of Eden, we've been, mankind was banished from there. And we're just going through, sometimes you can feel like you're going through the motions. And that the hardships of life get the better of us. You know, uh, my son Isaiah was in hospital this week. And just walking through those wards and looking at the kids in those hospitals, it's just, life can be yuck sometimes, eh? Life can be really sad sometimes, and I just, but perspective helps, doesn't it? Perspective helps in knowing that we're just in transit in this life. You know, we're not, Philippians tells us that our citizenship is actually in heaven. You know, whatever we're going through, the, the hardships that we face, they're only momentary, they're momentarily that we're gonna face these hardships. We're gonna get through and we're gonna be home soon with Jesus. And I think it's sooner <laughs> than maybe some of us know, but we're gonna be there soon. So be encouraged by that. Let that give you joy. Let that give you comfort that even through this uh, transit period that we're going through, that we're gonna be home soon. You know, and being in transit isn't always fun. We flew to Queensland recently and you know, sometimes there's delays, maybe delays to answered prayers, maybe cancellation of answered prayers. The prayers don't, don't, don't come, don't happen. But there's delays in transit. There's cancellations, dreams unfulfilled. Maybe you thought you'd be somewhere. I know I had dreams that I thought in my life at this stage I'd probably be somewhere else, but I am where I am and I'm happy where I am. But sometimes we have dreams and aspirations and things don't work out the way that we want them. It was all in transit. 
You have to deal with people in transit. Some people smell. Some people are inconsiderate. Some people put their chair all the way back when you've got a 10-month-old baby. But if you can find a good coffee, <laughs> it makes it a lot easier. <laughs> but you know, Jesus has made it, has made a way for us back to the Father. Because that's our ultimate goal, right? Where do we want to be? We want to be with Jesus. That's what we want as Christians. And even not as a Christian, you know, before I got saved, outwardly, I was doing good. Everything was fine financially. Everything was good. But inwardly, I had this emptiness inside of me. And the moment that I became a Christian, it was like, I'm like, aha, this is what I'm here for. This is the meaning of life because I had a connection with my father. And Jesus, thank God for Jesus because he's made that way possible back to the father. Our eternity is secure in heaven. And along the way, we have a helper. Thankfully, that Jesus didn't leave us as orphans, but he sent us the Holy Spirit to be our helper. In Ephesians Chapter, chapter 2, 19 to 22, it says, Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together grows into a holy temple in the Lord in whom you, you can put your name there, are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. So we have the Holy Spirit within us. The moment that we become Christians, the moment that we say yes to Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and lives within us. And you know, we can't do life effectively without the Holy Spirit. Try it. I don't try it, but I'm saying, take it from me. I've tried it, and it doesn't work very well. I've tried to live days where, not I've tried to, but th things happen, and you're not in communion with God, and it doesn't work out very well for me. But the thing is that the Holy Spirit is our power supply. You know, We make a conscious decision every night to put our phones on charge, right? Because we need them. We need them to function in the way that they're designed to function. And we make a conscious effort to put that phone, that charger into the phone. And if you forget, then you got like wake up at 9 o'clock and you've got well, whatever time you wake up, and you've got 13% to last you the whole day. It's not going to work very well. But the point is that we need to make a conscious effort to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. You know? We need to make a conscious effort to make time in our day to hear his voice. It doesn't have to be hours. Wherever, our days are all very different. We all do different things for work. Whatever works for you. I'm not a morning person. I'm not the guy that's going to get up at 4 a.m. unless I'm woken up and I can't get back to sleep. And I'm going to sit there worshiping because I'll fall asleep. I'm being honest with you. So for me, on the way to work, this is my prayer. God... Jesus, Holy Spirit, fill me with everything that I need for today. Because without you, I can do absolutely nothing. Fill me afresh this morning, Holy Spirit. And, and if there's anyone that I can share your truth with, please put them in my path and give me the right words to say. And then during work, when I feel I start to get empty, and I'm serving a customer that's annoying me, in my head, Lord, help me love this guy. 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 One guy asked for a bacon and egg roll. He goes, but I don't want the sauce on the egg, only on the bacon. <laughs> Lord, grace, give me grace, give me grace, give me grace, give me grace. <laughs> but without the Holy Spirit, I'd be an ugly person. I'll tell you that now. Because my flesh is ugly. My flesh is real ugly. My mother's agreeing with me, isn't she? So, yes. I was a rotten child as a kid. <laughs> In Galatians it says, now we're all ugly, it's not just me, okay? So don't sit there going, Jesus is a rotten Christian, this one. I say then, walk in the Spirit, 
And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Walk in the Spirit. Now, I'm such a good sinner that I can sin with worship music on. So I don't think walk in the Spirit means just put the worship music on. Because I can be driving in traffic, got the worship music playing, someone cuts me off. (laughs) Walk in the Spirit. What does that mean? Walk in the Spirit. Keep in step with the Spirit. It's talking about people marching. that They're all marching in time with each other. March in time with the Holy Spirit. But you can only do that by giving Him time, by being in the Word. The Word is the sword of the Spirit. When temptation comes, you fight it with the Word. And you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, lust, for the, for the flesh lusts against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these two are contrary to one another. There's a battle going on inside of you. Don't think that you've got split personalities. Because I used to think, what's wrong with me? You've got your flesh and your spirit that are in contrast to each other. They hate each other. One wants to do this, the other wants to do that, but they're both inside of you. So what do you do? So that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. And it goes on to list the character traits of our flesh. And I'm not going to go through them because we know them, I'm sure. We struggle with them every day. But the fruits of the Spirit I will talk about. Love. Loving the unlovable. Just like Jesus loved them. On that cross, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. Love. Joy. I've had a theme of joy this morning. We need joy. Because our world is going south. Yeah? You know that, right? Things aren't going to get better. People aren't going to get nicer. We're told in 2 Timothy what it will be like in the last days. We need joy. We need the joy of God, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You walk in these things, people will know you're different. You won't even have to preach. You won't have to say a word. They will know that there's something different about you. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. It's a direct choice to walk in the Spirit. Like I said, time in His presence and time in the Word. And then there's gifts of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7 talks about this. It says, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So there's gifts of the Holy Spirit that are given to each of us, but profit all of us. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. So just be content with the gifting that he's given you because he wills it. You may not think that you're qualified to do that. Like me, I don't really think I'm qualified to preach, to be honest with you. But thank you. (laughs) Thank you, Dennis. But I'm saying as, as, as humans, you know, we doubt ourselves and we think, well, why would they want to listen to me for? I don't really have that much to say. Or you might be up here worshiping and you think, well, I'm not really, you know, this is no, no. But it's he that gives the giftings. It's him that does it. I think it's actually better when we think that we're less qualified. I think God can use us more then. Yeah, humility. That's right. And then Ephesians 4 verse 11, it talks about, uh, and, he, and he himself, this is talking about Jesus now, gave some to be apostles, but it's Jesus through the Holy Spirit. Apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. And this is all for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ, none of us are better than any of us. No gifting is better than any other gifting. We just operate differently because it's all for the edification of Jesus. It's all about to show everyone Jesus. It's all for Him. And if it's not for Him, well then, what are you doing? There's no point. It's fruitless. It's of of eternal significance, insignificance eternally. And our work's going to be tested one day. It's going to be tested. God's going to, Jesus is going to stand, we're going to stand before Jesus and say, okay, Paul, when you're preaching, why were you preaching? Were you preaching because you like the sound of your voice? Or were you preaching because you think people, are, you, you want people to think good of you? Why do I preach? I preach because I love the word and I love just edifying Jesus through the word. 
And then there's different roles of the Holy Spirit in Scripture as well. Some of these surprised me when I read them. Like, wow. But in Acts chapter 16, verses 6 to 7, we're talking about different roles of the Holy Spirit. It says, Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. They were forbidden by the Holy I had to reread that. I said, what? They were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. How can you be forbidden to preach the, the, the word? Doesn't God want us to preach the word? After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go to Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. What's going on here? Because then we read in Acts chapter 18, verse 5, it says, When Silas and Timothy had come from Macedonia, Paul was compelled by the Spirit and testified to the Jews that Jesus is the Christ. So sometimes the Holy Spirit works in us to preach. Sometimes we need to shut up and not say anything. Just love maybe. Just listen. Sometimes we're really quick to talk. Sometimes people just need us to listen. There was a, I was on set the other day, and um, there was this guy there that he was talking about. Uh, he, he's read the Bible, and he's, no, he's listened to the Bible, and he's listened to the Quran, and he's goes, oh, it's, it's kind of all just saying the same thing. And I'm this, and he wasn't talking directly to me, but he was talking kind of next to me. And I'm like, I probably should say something right now. And tell him that it's not actually saying the same thing, that they're completely different, but and that Jesus, anyway, he wasn't talking about Jesus, he's just, you know, going on. And I'm there, but I didn't feel in that moment to say anything. So I just sat there and just heard what he was saying. The next day, I'm reading my book. I'm, re I'm reading a book on the book of Revelation. And he goes, hey, what are you reading? I said, it's a book about the book of Revelation. He goes, oh, wow. I guess that's pretty intense. I said, yeah, man. It goes pretty cool. I said, you know, some of these things that the, the book of Revelation talk about, I said, are starting to happen now. We're seeing the setup of these things. I go, so you know what that tells you, Luke? I go, that tells you that the Bible is 100% accurate. I said, because we're starting to see the things that the, this, this book talks about and many other things that the Bible talks about already coming to pass. And I said, I said to him, I go, I find it harder to believe in evolution than to have faith in God. He said, oh yeah, why is that? I said, because, I said, I go, do you know that the dust, that, that the chemical substance found in humans is the same that's found in soil? And he said, really? I said, yes. I said, you know how God made man? I go, out of the soil. I go, so the same stuff that's in soil is in humans. I go, how did that happen? I go, that's incredible. And then I said to him, I said, um, what did I say to him? I said, and this whole idea that everything just appeared, I said, I, I, I can't fathom that. I said, when you see a picture, I said, what does that tell you? And he goes, that someone painted the picture? I said, exactly. I go, so when you see creation, and I said, you see a beautiful sunset, and you see this, and you see that, I said, that tells you that there's a creator. And he's just listening. He's going, Wow. Wow. So the day before, he really didn't need me, I guess. The Holy Spirit wasn't leading me to tell him what he was saying wasn't true. But then the next day, I had an opportunity to share with what I shared with him. And I guess that impacted him more than what I was thinking in my mind I should have said to him the day before. And sometimes we don't really know, you know, in our, in our earthly thinking. And sometimes it doesn't make sense to us. But we just got to trust that the Holy Spirit knows what's needed and the timing that it's needed in. And that's what we see here with these scriptures. What else does the Holy Spirit do? Different roles. He convicts and saves. You know, we don't do the saving. There was another girl on set. She goes, oh, you're a Christian. I said, yeah. She goes, oh, wow, that's awesome. I said, yeah. She goes, yeah, I love the way that you were just sharing with Luke. She goes, I, I feel like I have to share with everybody. I said, well, you don't. I said, you just got to listen to the Holy Spirit. I said, because you don't do the saving. I said, he does the saving. We just do the planting. And aren't we privileged that God uses us? God uses us to do the planting. 
And the Holy Spirit is the one that germinates that seed and brings people into a knowledge of Jesus. John 16, verse 7, it says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage, this is Jesus speaking, that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And then, and when he has come, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me. Of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. 1 Corinthians 12 tells us that no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. So once again, it's the Holy Spirit that brings conviction into the lives of people that leads them to repentance. He convicts the world of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Normally conviction is followed by judgment. So in a court of law, normally you're convicted and then you get a judgment. But when the Holy Spirit is doing a working in you, there's the conviction that takes place. The moment that you realize that I'm a sinner and I need a savior, that's the Holy Spirit that brings you to that revelation. It's called grace through the Holy Spirit. So the moment that you realize that, that's the working of the Holy Spirit and the revelation of righteousness of what Jesus did on the cross takes care of the judgment. It satisfies the judgment of God because when he sees you now, he sees Jesus. He doesn't see your sin anymore. So stop being so hard on yourself. When you sin, you've missed the mark. That's okay. Ask for forgiveness and move on. Stop beating yourself over the head. And I know you do it because I do it. Sometimes I think, how can you get up and preach after what you've just said to that guy or done this to that guy? I make myself sound like a bad person, don't I? <laughs> but being honest, you know, sometimes we think very low of ourselves. We forget that when God looks at you, he sees Jesus. He sees the blood of Jesus, perfect, sinless. Come, my son, my daughter, come, have fellowship with me. Satan doesn't want you to know that. You're made in the image of God. Also, one of the roles of the Holy Spirit is he restrains evil. But he restrains evil through the church. Yeah? Check this out. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 to 8, it says, Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering to him. These are two separate events. I hope you understand that. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the second coming. Our gathering to him is the rapture of the church. He's talking about two different things here. We ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if from us, as though the day of Christ had come. These two events are wrapped up under the umbrella of the day of the Lord. So when we understand scripture, we see the day of the Lord. It's talking about a season of events that happen. And it goes on to say, Let no one deceive you by, by any means, for that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. So before Jesus comes back, there's going to be a falling away a defection of truth from the church. We're told about this. The falling away comes first, and the man of sin is revealed, the Antichrist, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or all that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Do you not remember that when I was with you, I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. People ask me all the time, oh, do you think, you know, do you think that person's the Antichrist? Do you think it's that? But I'm not going to be here. I'm not going to be here because it just told me that before Jesus comes back, the church will be removed because it's saying the restraint is going to be removed here. And we've got to understand that the Holy Spirit is not the one that's being removed. It's the Holy Spirit, the working of the Holy Spirit within the church 
that is what's going to be removed for lawlessness to be complete, for lawlessness to completely abound on the earth. But at the moment, we are the church. We have the Holy Spirit as the church. We are the light of the world. Jesus is the light of the world, but he also calls us the light of the world. We are the voice of truth in this world. When society tells you that there's 78 genders, God tells us that there's male and there's female. When the world tells you that marriage is between whoever it wants to be, the Bible tells us we're the voice of truth. And many other things, not just those things, but many other things. We're the voice of truth. So the Holy Spirit through the church is restraining evil. And that should bring us encouragement that we're making a difference. But it also should give us encouragement that at any moment, Jesus can come back for us to take us to be with him. So be encouraged because we're almost there. So finish strong. Make a conscious effort to spend time with the Holy Spirit in the Word because that's when you're, most going, to be, you're going to be most effective. And if there's people watching or people here that don't know Jesus, that you haven't had that moment of realization that you're a sinner and that you need a savior, I ask you to pray right now for the Holy Spirit to reveal Jesus to you. And if there's some of us here that need just a fresh touch from the Holy Spirit or just some some time to be filled, to be encouraged, then you can either do it in your seat or maybe we can get the guys back up and we can make time for that. But I just want to close in prayer, yeah? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father, that you've not left us alone, but we have your Holy Spirit to be with us. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you do in each and every one of us. We ask that you just fall on us afresh this morning, Lord. Whatever it is that we need, whatever it is, Lord, that whatever it is, Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and do all that you want to do. Continue to do all that you want to do in this place. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your joy, Lord. Thank you for your joy upon those that have no joy, Lord. Those that are struggling, those that are going through the motions of life, where life has beaten them down, Lord, they're toiling through life. I pray for your joy upon them right now, Lord. Fill them afresh this morning, God. And those of us here that are struggling with identity, struggling with our image, we're made in the image of God. Lord, I pray, Holy Spirit, that you come and reveal who we are in Christ, who you say we are, that we're more than conquerors. And I thank you as a church corporately, Lord, we will continue to shine your light into this dark world, that we will continue to show the love of Jesus, that we will continue with your Holy Spirit to restrain the evil. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just come. Anyone? Anyone that uh, needs prayer? Just invite you to come.
I just, uh, as we were uh, praying, I just, um, I got this uh, picture and, um, okay, uh, and I checked to see if it was for me at the moment because, uh, yeah, I know we're all going through stuff, guys, and uh, like Paul shared, it's life. Um, but I checked and I asked the Lord and he pointed, uh, well, to the gentleman over here next to Michelle. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Hi. <laughs> Nathan. Pleased to meet you, Nathan. Nathan, I just uh, got a picture over you and uh, it was um, God has dumped this big skip bin dump, dumper of blessings all over you. Uh, it's just this little... Uh, at the moment, I don't know what's going on in your life, but there's a, a mindset and a way that you're thinking about things in terms of yourself, personally, your life. And I just feel that it's it's um, it's an invisible glass that's uh, not allowing at the moment to, to penetrate all this uh, blessing. It's there. It's there. I don't know. So I could be off. Um, I, uh, oh. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. So it's God for you, Nathan. So he loves you so much. He wants you to experience the dumping, this massive skipping that he's got for you, always had, and is continuing to bring to you. Uh, yeah, so something's just uh, keeping that at, the, at, at bay at the moment. But once you click to it, man, just look out. Where, where you yeah. best intentions and the best life for him and I know Lord that you're working mightily on his behalf and you are changing what needs to change in all of us and in Nathan mindset um, reveal your truth to, to Nathan reveal your ways you reveal your life you are the way the truth and the life and Lord Nathan is just waiting for the dumping to happen Lord, thank you that you are doing the work. Nathan doesn't have to do a single thing. He's just waiting on your love. Just show him. Give him direction. Guide him into what he, what you want him to click and change. And um, we're going to see him dumped <laughs> uh, blessings all over his life and you have and you have walked with him so far and you have guided him and you have shown your love to him but there's more to come in Jesus name we thank you Father that you love Nathan so much thank you for gracing him with his presence to us beautiful Is there anyone else? <laughs> Holy Spirit's obviously here, moving and speaking. It's a great demonstration of the Holy Spirit speaking through Mary to a situation that she could have known nothing about. Nathan confirming that it's, it's accurate. Is there anyone else while we're here? <laughs> Don't be shy. Step out. You can only be, you, know, you can't be wrong, I guess. Yeah, it's good. That was that was awesome. It's just such a great reminder. Thank you. Yeah. Such a great reminder that um, we need the Holy Spirit to change us. We we're not going to change on our own. We need the Holy Spirit, and um, and I love that. It's about our identity. It's about knowing who we are in Christ. So, um, as always, the front is open. Please don't be shy to come down for prayer. Please don't be shy because. We can't do this life alone. You know, we do it. That's why we come to a church. We come to be with people and to glean from people and to have others stand with us. So front's always going to be open. We're always going to welcome people down the front. But um, be blessed today. Um, thank you for coming to church. 
I really do pray that this week, Holy Spirit reveals to you um, what He needs to reveal for you, for your situation and and to experience His joy uh, in His life. So be blessed. Have a great rest of your weekend and, and public holiday. Thank you.